guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, I am very excited to be covering Ladies of London, Season 1, Episode 1, My Fair Ladies of London. You guys, I have been dying to talk about this with you. I love this show. This is probably going to be my fourth <laughs> watching of it, I'm excited to say. I love it. I love it. It's a great show. It's one of my favorites. I love to check in and see what the ladies are up to and to keep up. It's just such a good show. So I, I'm excited to discuss it with you. Uh, now, most of you have seen it, but I know some of you are watching it for the first time. So I'm going to try to avoid big spoilers. We'll talk, you know, here and there, and I'm sure things will slip out about what they're up to. But I'm going to try to avoid big spoilers, so that way if you're watching it through with us for the first time, you, know, you can be surprised at the end when we talk about what all happened with the ladies. So, let's get into it. Here we are in jolly old London, and I love it. I am such a travel person. I love London. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. Love being there. I'm drinking tea right now while we record this, and as soon as this stupid quarantine's over, I want to go. <laughs> so this show is just a little bit different. Um, it's very much like Real Housewives, obviously, but I believe, let's see, I think this aired around 2014, and they just did things a little different. You'll see some title cards come up, and... You'll see the entrances are a little different, but most of all, I mean, it has the same almost pacing as the Real Housewives show. So the first person we see here is Noelle. And you know what's funny, guys, is my opinion on these ladies is going to change, especially doing this rewatch, because I haven't watched this probably in about two years. So I'm kind of excited to see who I like now and who I don't. I remember who I didn't before. I'll see <laughs> if that changes. But um, but anyway, so here's Noelle, American girl from Seattle. And she came to London with her fiancé and she never left. And of course, they didn't work out. So here she is in London. Here's Annabelle. Annabelle comes a very aristocratic family. But of course, she's rock and roll. So we'll talk about Annabelle. Here's Marissa, Marissa Hermer from California. Yeah, she, her husband is big in London and owns some clubs. And here's Caroline Stanbury. You've heard me talk about Caroline probably on the Housewives shows. Her stylist Luke has some crossover with Dorinda, but here she is. And then there's Juliet. Juliet is from Chicago. Get more into her and her family. Um, her husband was given a job over in London. So her they moved over. Here's Caprice. Caprice, the one named model who made it big in London and never left. So we kick off here with Caroline Stanbury in front of her beautiful Surrey house. I just... Love this house. I can only imagine how much it costs. She kind of alludes to it. It's, yeah, I'm sure it's crazy. So it's revealed here that Caroline is a member of the Vesti family. Uh, their combined wealth is over $1 billion. To which I say, holy crap. Look at this closet. Look at all those Birkin bags and the shoes. And it's just beautiful. It looks like a store. So Caroline has three children, a daughter and twin boys. And she is married to, he's, his name is spelled C-E-M, but it's pronounced Jem. So here's Jem. And Caroline runs an elite gift service that caters to luxury connoisseurs. We'll see a lot of this office coming up. That big be nice sign cracks me up in neon. See Kyle? Caroline did it first. Because <laughs> now Kyle has that big stupid neon sign in her living room or foyer or whatever. So we go over to Caprice. Caprice is doing a photo shoot. She is announcing her pregnancy. She's, I believe, 42 here, and she didn't think she could get pregnant, and voila, good for her. So it, it's revealed that she made it big by coming to London. She, uh, within six months, she said everybody knew her name. She could command 15000 for a photo shoot for every few minutes, to which I say, wow, must be nice. 
Um, so they reveal here in this title card that she's dated Rod Stewart, David Spade, Dennis Quaid. Funny looking picture of her and David Spade. So she now owns a, it looks like a lingerie slash bathing suit business. Annual sales, they decide to flash on the camera here is 6.5 million. To which I say... Wow. So I did Google it. It looks like the business is still very much up and running. Here's Ty Caprice's boyfriend and baby daddy. And we'll find out some more interesting stuff about Caprice as the season goes on. So I'm going to save that. So she meets up with Caroline Stanbury for lunch. And Ca Caroline says that Caprice has done very well. She's as accepted as an American can be. And it's a lot about social circles. It's a lot about how to be accepted basically you know especially the british women are saying you know you can buy your seat at the table but it doesn't mean that they'll respect you or talk to you so it's interesting to see these americans trying to fit in with these you know posh british ladies and and i just i love it i love seeing the wealth over there i love seeing you know the european lifestyle it all appeals to me i love watching this show i couldn't be more excited to be talking about it with you and i can't wait to hear your thoughts so we go over to annabelle's and she is not my favorite of the series um i'm gonna put that out there i told you i was gonna avoid spoilers there's one big spoiler i ha i just have to mention because i'm sure it will come up and it's really sad and depressing but unfortunately she passed away. She passed away of a stroke. And that's awful. I, just absolutely horrifying. She was so young. It's so sad. That kind of leaves a dark mark on the series for me. I, I, you know. Anyway, moving on. So she has a beautiful home over in Chelsea. Look at this. I want to live here. Look how beautiful. So it's revealed that she comes from a, an, I'm not going to say that right, aristocratic heiress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah family and she grew up going to castles and things but she says she's not that posh she said she doesn't like to get her hair and nails done she's more rock and roll it's revealed that she was alexander mcqueen's muse for like 20 years she says he was her best friend her brother her husband like just using these terms of endearment that he meant the whole world to her and unfortunately of course he passed away and it's a theme you'll see throughout where the devastation just sticks with her. Um, she's obviously just never, she just never recovered from that. So Caprice calls Annabelle and they're discussing polo on the park. So that's an event, of course, coming up over the weekend that'll bring all the ladies together. Um, and Annabelle does reveal that she just doesn't go out and meet people ever since, you know, Alexander passed away. So she thinks it's good for her to get out and go. We do see her leaving her house. She is headed to horse riding lessons. So she's sounds like she's been racing since she was young. She let it go for a while. She's picking it back up for a charity event in honor of Alexander. She's going to wear his colors. Now this, I remember. I remember thinking this is so interesting. This is just something I know nothing about, racing horses. And I... This is just interesting, this machine to practice your stance and stuff for racing horses. It's, it's kind of cool to see <laughs> how the other half lives. So then we see Noel. Oh my gosh, I have so much to say about Noel. Noel <laughs> Reno. So here's the thing I'll start off with Noel. I think Noel is a beautiful woman. I do. I think she's stunning. Noel's lips, they look fine. But now that I point this out, all you're going to notice is how she, she pouts her lips. It's the strangest thing. That's another thing. All these years, I remember it sticks with me. I'm going to point it out every time I see her do it. But it's like she can't stop puffing her lips out or gesturing with her lips or something when she talks. It's really strange. So see it here? She's got her lips jutted out. That's that's her resting lips face. So it's revealed that Noelle's ex-fiance is a multimillionaire. That's the one apparently that she moved to London for. Her current boyfriend is rum rumored to be worth millions. So again, this show is, is marred by tragedy, unfortunately. So we saw at the beginning in memory of Scott Young and this is him. So I remember doing research at the time 
and it sounds like they were not together at the time of his death. That he fell out of a, or fell off a balcony, I believe. It was either out of a window or off of a balcony. And it's just so sad because he was not that old and tragic because I believe he had small children at the time too. And that's that's just awful. I mean, it's a thing. This is an ongoing story with her, her um, being with Scott. This Scott has an interesting history here where he's accused of hiding a bunch of assets. He actually served three months in prison for refusing to reveal his finances to the British court. So she's excited because apparently within three months of meeting her he asked for her hand she says that they've been trying to get married for four years but because of the divorce it's not been possible marissa comes on and says scott young is going through one of the biggest divorces of world history right now and being accused of magically making 400 million pounds disappear holy shit <laughs> From a young age, um, she's always wanted to move in powerful circles, and she feels like she's finally getting there. So, yeah, I don't know. Ooh, okay, so moving on. There's the lips again. <laughs> so we see Caprice. Caprice is meeting Noel for lunch. So they meet up, and you'll see this theme kind of throughout. Noel kind of kisses Caprice's ass because she's, you know, still quote unquote new to London and making friends and. Caprice is kind of taking her under her wing. I think because Noel does kiss her ass, Caprice likes her so much. And, you know, Caprice says she admires her hustle. She can see it in her, and that's what Caprice had to do when she moved here. Again, Noel's lips, such a strange way of holding her lips. <laughs> I can't stop noticing the lips. Okay. So apparently Caprice has known Scott for a long time. And then Noelle is saying, I love your sage advice for getting ahead in this town. And Noelle says, the drama in my personal life overshadows what's going on. Caprice explains that Scott and Noelle's press situation is not great. And Noelle has to be careful. She's explained that in America, it's just a little bit different versus, I guess, in England, they're a lot more ruthless about press. I don't, they seem pretty ruthless here, too. So then we meet Marissa, and this is why I was kind of saying sometimes my feelings change. Sometimes I really like Marissa, and I did like her this episode. I remember not liking her, so I can't remember what's going to change to make me not like her. But we'll just take it one episode at a time. My feelings will probably change ten times. Now, Marissa, I think she is a beautiful girl. I really do. I think she's really stunning. She's just classically beautiful. Marissa's funny thing, again, I'm focusing on mouths, but you'll notice it. She talks out of the side of her mouth. It's kind of strange the way she speaks. But um, we find out that she has married a man named Matt Hermer, and she's explaining that he owns this bougie, bougies? Uh, bougie nightclub. And you had to be a member to get in and it was people like the royal family and people who have won awards big time celebrities um you know would go to this club it says it has a secret entrance for the royal family here we see marissa and her husband in the park i don't know why he's a he's a <laughs> he's a little man but i am strangely attracted to him i think he's so cute i don't i don't know why but um, they order this hamper in the park, and it's so cool because it's just brought to them. I just think that's such a cool thing. I know I sound American, but that's just not something that I know, th know of from over here. But over there, you just order a hamper, and they bring it to you with your tea and your scones and stuff. <laughs> so they're enjoying a lovely time with the family in the park. It's revealed that Marissa is giving up her American citizenship to become a Brit. So she's excited, but you know, a little bit down about it too. Then we go over to Juliet. Juliet lives in Battersea. I don't know if I'm saying that right. She's married to a man named Gregor. They got together in America, but then his job had them move to London. She said her two little children, Georgina and Truman, have British accents, and that's so cute. Juliet's another one. She's not my favorite. She She's a little obnoxious, and we'll see this play out later. So we're gonna see, again, I'm gonna take it episode by episode. You can't trust me. Sometimes I like her, sometimes I don't. I hate this hairstyle. I hate this talking head look. I think it ages her about 30 years here. I just, I really don't love that look. But we'll see that she's loud in everything she does. She goes to play tennis and everything's 
Marissa calls it everything's a Juliet show. So we see Marissa's house over in Chelsea. She's with her son and Juliet comes over and they go and they are headed to meet Noel for tea. So Noel comes and joins them and Juliet immediately kind of lays into Noel saying, I heard you were in the papers. What's going on? Noelle says, oh, it's just about Scott's divorce. Noelle explains it is Scott not wanting to reveal his partner's business dealings. So she's kind of making Scott the hero. He took one for the team. He went to jail. Sounds like Scott's kind of a scumbag and he was hiding assets from his ex and trying not to pay out too much money. Um, she's Noelle, she gets defensive about it, says, I have other things going on in my life, which she brought up before rather than what just the press is talking about. Juliet says, how do you deal with that, not knowing if you're with an honest person? And Noelle says, Juliet's being such a bitch right now. Juliet's asking why it's so complicated. Noelle says, there may be a bit of jealousy factor because I get more media attention. <laughs> they talk about Polo in the Park. Of course, that's the thing. It's the morning of Polo in the Park. They're at Caroline's house in Surrey. That's where we see Luke. Again, Luke helps Dorinda. So we see him now on New York sometimes popping up and we see him here. So Poe in the Park apparently kicks off summer season. Anyone coming in from America trying to break in, that's not an easy thing to do. They talk about that. We go over to Juliet's house. She's getting her makeup done. Juliet asks her makeup artist, do you have any American friends? Makeup artist says, no, I don't like Americans, and they laugh. So in the car is Caroline, Caprice, and Annabelle, and they're talking about Scott. And Caprice is saying, again, in America, the press isn't as harsh, but in England, they dig up the dirt and they do not let it go. And this is part of the fame game. They start discussing that you don't wear hats to polo in the park. Of course, they flash to Noelle in the other car wearing a hat. That part didn't bother me. I actually... I actually kind of like Noelle's hat. I mean, it's kind of more of a headband, I thought, but I th it didn't bother me. They all arrive. Juliet meets everyone. Annabelle says the dress code is smart, but not too smart. The Americans are dressed like they're going to tea at the Buckingham Palace. <laughs> They sit at a table. Marissa's all over Caroline. Marissa says, Caroline Stanberry is the darling of British society. Caroline says to Noelle, I love that hat. You look so smart. And Noelle says, I am, in case you didn't know. So obviously there's tension there. Noelle and her hat are totally unnecessary for the event, is what, <laughs> what Caroline is saying. She says to Noelle, I feel like this outfit is wasted here. And Marissa says, that's what you call a British put down. They go to watch polo and Caprice says, no one goes to watch polo. They just go to drink and socialize. Caroline says, in Britain, you aren't meant to show excitement. Look at me. This is me excited now in a total deadpan that I love. Marissa and Juliet and Noelle are all having fun. Caprice and Caroline and Annabelle are sitting back and just being, we see them stomping in the divots from the horses. It's a big tradition in polo. Marissa says she loves it because she thinks of pretty woman, which is exactly what I thought of as well. Annabelle says she's happy that Caprice introduced her to some new people. Juliet says, I hope we can get along. Caroline says, Juliet is an excit excitable wind-up doll. And Caprice calls Juliet too American. <laughs> Damn, I love this show so much. It's so good. We get, I mean, this is just the first episode. So we're just getting into it. Getting to know everybody for the first time or getting to know them again, whatever your case is. It's just so good. I love these women. I love all of them. I love the dynamic that they bring. I love the wealth that they show. I think they're all incredibly beautiful women. And uh, so I'm so excited to be back and talking about it. So, so stay with me. I will be recapping this season. I'll be putting up episodes. So keep watching it and we'll talk about it. I'm dying to know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think. And thank you so much for watching. You can comment down below and you can also find me on Twitter at Real Recaps. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.